All right, now to answer a question that every person, when you begin to take algebra, um, is curious about is, why must I show and learn steps when solving very simple equations? Okay, now the simple answer to this is, the equations become more and more difficult and you cannot do them mentally in your head. And if you have not learned the proper steps when working with simpler equations, then of course, working more difficult equations, you're gonna be stuck. Now, most of you will begin to experience this at about chapter 2.67 and eight. And of course, they're gonna get more difficult as we go along. Now, you must know this. In this particular book, if you cannot do chapter two to the point where you can work 99% of the problems without making any kind of error, you will struggle in algebra. Repeat, if you cannot do chapter two, you will struggle in algebra. If you don't like showing your work because you were used to doing problems mentally, those days are pretty much over. Those days are pretty much over, okay? So you must learn the proper steps. And we're gonna show you why in a brief second. Okay, now if you notice in section 2.2, .2, um, and also in 2.1, they were giving you very simple equations. Now you may have thought the major goal of those equations was to simply write down the correct answer. But especially starting in 2.2, .2, the most important thing is the step to get the correct answer. For example, three plus n is equal to six. Well, everyone in this classroom knows that n has to be three. Three plus three is equal to six. But that's not what they're trying to get you this, uh, to do here. They're trying to get you to recognize that working with a simple equation, you can just easily figure out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong as you learn these steps. So what they want here is, and this is the most important thing, is this. I got three plus n, all right? What operation or what technique must I use to get this n by itself? I must add a negative three to both sides. Okay. That's what you're learning in this particular lesson, to add that negative three to both sides. Now, the threes were canceled out. And I end up with 6 minus 3. So n is equal to 6 minus 3. Over here, the most important thing is to not to know that n minus 2 is equal to 6. We all know that's going to be 8. 8 minus 2 is equal to 6. We know that. But the most important thing here is to know I got an n. I want to get it by itself. So I must get rid of that negative 2. How do I do it? I add positive 2 to both sides. And then I add vertically. These will cancel out, and I'm left with 6 plus 2, and that's going to give me that 8, right? But it must be shown here. 4 times what, or 4 times n, would give me 8. We know that the answer is going to be 2. That's not what they're looking for. They're looking for the technique, right? 4 times what would give me 8? Divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4, and I end up with n equaling 2. So once again, what's important? To know the operation. What operation did I use here? I had four times n, so I use the operation involving division. Divide by four, divide by four. That's what's most important. Here, I got n divided by two. Most of us are gonna say n over two, but that's read as n divided by two. Is equal to five. What must I do to this equation on this side to get rid of that two? I must multiply both sides by two. Both sides by two. Two divided by two is one. I'm left with one n. Five times two is 10. Now this says one n, but there's no need for me to write that one there because how many n's do I have? One, so n is equal to uh, 10. All right, and we got one more type for you to look at here. Here we got 3 fourths times n is equal to 2. Once again, my goal here is to get this n by itself, not guess what n is. 
to get the end by itself. So one trick that we learned in 2.2 was I multiply by the reciprocal. So to get rid of the reciprocal, I must, excuse me, multiply by a fraction. And to get rid of this fraction, I must multiply it by its reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of 3 over 4? That's going to be 4 over 3. 4 over 3. All right, what's 4 times 3? 12. 3 times 4? 12. Times n, and that's equal to 2 times 4 is 8. I know I got a 1 up under there. 1 times 3 is 3. And I end up with n is equal to 8 over 3. Now, this is why it is important to know these steps. Notice here, it was hard to guess what n was. You couldn't figure out what n was until you applied the algebraic manipulation to solve the equation. Now, to this point, most of you think that working out something like this, right, and finding the answer, you think that you're doing something big, great, and like you're a genius. But believe it or not, you're not. You've been doing this since about, what, maybe third, fourth grade, probably even second, right? This is how it was written before. It was written like this. Remember this? Remember that? That's what that is. It's just that instead of using this box with the question mark in it, now we're using a variable. All right. Remember, uh, you gave you something like this. I don't know, something like uh, all right. They give you um, the five. Give you a box question mark. Then you tell them what that what that's going to be. Everybody follow? All right, so once again, nothing new, no big deal. The most important thing is to learn the steps. The most important thing right now is to learn the steps and apply them accordingly. Now, here's another reason why you want to learn these steps. Look at this problem here. 3 fourths n plus 7.18 n is equal to a negative 4.46 n plus the square root of n to the fourth. Notice, you can no longer guess. You can stay here all year for the next three or four years trying to guess what n is, and you will never figure it out. The only way to solve this equation for n is you have to know all your steps to work through and solve this problem algebraically. That is the major reason why you need to know how to show your steps when solving very simple equations. Because the simple equations lead to more difficult equations. And don't forget, what was once an entire lesson becomes one step. What was once an entire lesson becomes one step in future lessons. Okay? All right, now this is fair enough warning to, to help you get your mind right when it comes to showing your work and your steps in algebra.